Welcome to the 2016 St. Louis University Commencement Ceremony. Please rise for the posting of colors by the Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology Color Guard. You may be seated. In addition to the flags brought in by our color guard, you will notice that surrounding the floor are flags representing the countries of our international students. The flags closest to the stage represent the countries of today's international graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, the University Mace is carried by Dr. Sung Kim, the Paul G. Lorenzini Endowed Professor in International Business. He is followed by the members of the Board of Trustees, members of the President's Coordinating Council, the deans of the colleges and schools, directors of the centers, our student speaker, the 2016 honorary degree recipients, and the President of St. Louis University.
stage party, you may be seated. The faculty of the schools and colleges of St. Louis University will be escorted by the university marshals. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the endowed chairs and professors and faculty of St. Louis University. <laughs> Faculty, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2016 graduates 
of St. Louis University.
Graduates, please be seated. Good morning, everyone. To our graduates and to all of their family and friends who join us today in Chaffetz Arena, for St. Louis University's 2016 commencement ceremony. I believe we are about 10,000 strong here today. Here today. <laughs> we know many of you have come from great distances to be here to see one of our graduates uh, receive their degree. And we're so glad that you could be part of this ceremony with us. My name is Jeff Fowler. I am the university's vice president of marketing and communications. Let me be the first to welcome all of you. On the stage with me are the president, members of the board of trustees, members of the president's coordinating council, which includes the university's vice presidents, and representatives of the dean, faculty, staff, students, and the deans of our colleges and schools, and today's honored guests. We are all delighted to be part of this special day for all of you. May I now ask that everyone please rise for the singing of our national anthem to be sung today by St. Louis University's own choral group, the Master Singers, under the direction of Professor David Kowalski. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were 
so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Please be seated. Can we also give a round of applause to our student musicians at the back of the arena who have provided the music for today's event? At all SLU events, it is our tradition to call upon God to watch over and bless us all. I would now like to invite Father Dan White of the Society of Jesus, a SLU alumnus, a university trustee, and pastor of St. Francis Xavier College Church to offer our invocation. Let us take a moment to be present to the God who is always present to us. The psalmist prays, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. God heals all your ills. God crowns you with kindness and compassion. He fills your lifetime with good, and your youth is renewed like the eagles. God of infinite love and mercy, we gather in your presence with joy this morning to recognize the class of 2016. They are our daughters and sons, sisters and brothers, grandchildren, friends, spouses, and classmates. They, above all, O oh God, are your children, made in your image and likeness. They are signs to us of your goodness and of the blessings you freely give. We come on a day of endings and beginnings, and we consider what we have been and where we are going. For what has been accomplished, O Lord, we give you thanks. You have blessed in abundance the class of 2016. Their years here at St. Louis University have been fruitful. They have grown in wisdom and understanding. They have persevered in their studies, pursued academic excellence, and been challenged to seek the truth. They have been generous in service to the community, accompanied with compassion those in need, and opened their hearts to hear the cry of the poor. They have fought for justice, challenged assumptions, and been fearless in seeking the greater good. They have made lifelong friendships with one another, received guidance and support, and worked together as peers and colleagues. They have sought to know themselves, who they are, and who they desire to be. They have practiced the art of self-reflection and have balanced contemplation and action. They have grown in faith, hope, and love. For all this, we are most grateful. As we look to the future, O oh Lord, for what is to come, we seek your continued help. May the skills learned, the gifts received, and the knowledge gained be shared with others. May the moral and ethical formation they have received permeate their chosen fields and careers. May they continue to be tireless 
in the pursuit of a just society. May they be generous with their time and talents. May they be kept safe from all discouragement, cynicism, and helplessness. May they know the support of family and friends. And may the blessings promised to the compassionate be theirs in abundance. Above all else, great and mighty God, may they follow your commandment to love one another as you have loved them. Creator of all and source of our gratitude and our hope, bless the class of 2016 now and always. And we make this prayer in your name. Amen. Thank you, Father White. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the president of St. Louis University. Dr. Fred Postello is St. Louis University's 33rd president. He is the first lay president in the university's history. From his first day on campus, he has actively embraced and promoted SLU's Catholic Jesuit mission and its importance in providing a truly distinctive education for all of our students. Under his leadership, SLU has developed a new strategic plan that will ensure the educational, educational experience SLU provides to its students is both transformative and empowering. Please join me in welcoming the president of St. Louis University, Dr. Fred Postello. Good morning. Today, we have gathered to celebrate the past successes and future promise of you, the St. Louis University graduates of 2016. Together, we formally mark this important rite of passage in your lives and in the lives of your family and the life of this university community. To celebrate this momentous occasion, we are joined by 13 members of our Board of Trustees, many of whom have traveled great distances to be with you here today. Graduates of the Class of 2016, I would now like to ask you to please rise. I ask that you face your parents, family, and friends, those who have supported and nurtured you during this journey. Please join me in them. I ask that you now face forward and face the faculty. These are the men and women who have mentored, fostered your development. These are the men and women who have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of truth, to the creation of beauty, to mastering their disciplines who have a passion for transmitting that knowledge to you, the next generation, and who do so with genuine love and concern. Please join me in thanking the faculty of St. Louis University. Please be seated. And I wish to thank each and every one of you, members of the class of 2016, for all that you have already contributed to our fine Catholic Jesuit University and to the communities in which you live and work. When you chose to be a Billiken, you had a sense that you might find a community here that would see and value your unique gifts. As you sit before me now, I am confident that your hopes were realized, and that being a Billiken turned out to mean so much more than you ever imagined it would. As a Billiken, you forged your own path of discovery and growth. In the finest Jesuit tradition, you fundamentally committed yourself to sustained intellectual inquiry, to deep reflection. You embraced academic life with integrity, commitment, and purpose. 
You leave an enduring legacy for generation of Billikens to come. You are indeed men and women for and with others. Each of you has done your part, stepping up and speaking out. You have dedicated your time, offered solace, and stood up for Jesuit values. While here, you have participated in literally millions of hours of volunteer service throughout the region and the world. And you are generous in other ways. As of today, nearly 700 members of the class of 2016 made a gift to St. Louis University. Every gift makes a difference. Your generosity will support a new initiative called Students Helping Students Scholarship. It is designed to help fellow Billikens in need. You are truly examples of what it means to be a Billiken. At SLU, our way of proceeding is to model excellence, deepen faith, spur intellect, build character, and form confident citizens leading meaningful lives. As you move forward, your SLU education will sustain you. You have learned that you must reach within to reach out. You have already proven yourselves to be people who seek common ground, build connections, and promote justice. For these very reasons, the world needs St. Louis University, and you are graduates now more than ever before. This need is grounded in the challenges of these immediate times and in the 21st century. Our commencement speakers and honorary degree recipients illustrate this spirit. They lead faith-filled lives, lives that had made an enduring and personal commitment to advancing the health and well-being of humanity. This morning, we honor Sister Mary Jean Ryan and Ambassador Kevin O'Malley because they live our values. I know from talking with many of you that you, too, cherish these fundamental values. I am confident that your experiences in education at SLU will shape you for the rest of your lives. I encourage you to refine your commitment to intellectual excellence and inquiry. Stay engaged with those in need. Call upon your store of courage that has been forged through thoughtful and reflective dialogue with others and with God. As alumni, you will fulfill a higher purpose and contribute to the greater good, each in your own unique way. You will forever have the rich resources of each other and your alma mater to draw upon as you move forward through your life's journey. Graduates, I wish you Godspeed. Graduates, families, friends, colleagues, and honored guests, we are pleased to be joined here today by members of our distinguished faculty representing all of the university's colleges and schools. They have seen our graduates through many years of classes and papers and labs and projects and final exams, and sometimes they have been research colleagues. So it is most fitting that they are here today to celebrate one final success with their students. First, I would like to acknowledge our endowed chairholders and professors. These faculty, renowned in their field, are recognized around campus and across the country as the finest scholars in their areas of expertise. They inspire their colleagues to reach for greatness in teaching and research, and they encourage their students to excel in their studies and in their lives. I ask our endowed chairholders and professors to please rise and be recognized. The formative partnership between faculty and students lies at the heart of our academic enterprise. All faculty are by turns transmitters of knowledge, purveyors of culture, initiators of professional training, mentors, role models, confidence, 
and in some cases, as I said, research colleagues of their students. The faculty revel in learning, both their students' learning and their own, and they're committed to intellectual and personal development. In recognition of the many key roles that our faculty play in helping SLU graduates to develop both educationally and as whole persons capable of making a difference in the world, I would now ask all St. Louis University faculty in attendance to please stand and receive the thanks of those assembled here today. For the first time at our May commencement, we are pleased to be joined by a speaker from our graduating class. Hannah Vestal is a psychology major with minors in theology and public health. A native of Des Moines, Iowa, she is the founder of Billikens for Clean Water and recently was named one of St. Louis University's Women of the Year. After graduation, Hannah will join the Jesuit Volunteer Corps to serve a homeless shelter in Seattle. Please join me in welcoming our 2016 student speaker, Hannah Vestal. Four years ago, I had no idea what a Billiken was. But now I can say I am truly honored to become a Billiken for life with all of you. Congratulations, class of 2016. Yeah. As I reflected on my college experience, I came to a startling conclusion. The past four years at SLU have ruined me. I know you're probably thinking, if SLU has ruined her, then why was she chosen to give a commencement speech? Well, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I bet SLU has ruined you, too. I know this calls for an explanation. When I say ruined, I'm not talking about the shirt you spilled spaghetti sauce on or your cell phone that you dropped in the toilet. I say ruined in the sense that we will never be the same again. The term ruined for life was coined by Jack Morris, the founder of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, to suggest that those who do the service program will be forever changed and will not be able to see the world in the same way. I would argue the same is true for students who attend St. Louis University. After all, the SLU mission is about seeking excellence. It's about pursuing truth. It's about a continuous quest for discovery. It's about transforming society. These are demanding tasks. Being the Billikens we are called to be would change anyone who takes the mission to heart. I will share some examples with you of what being ruined looks like. Last year, I learned about the water crisis and the fact that millions of people around the world have to walk often up to four miles every day to collect water for their families. A jerry can is a typical container that people in Africa use to transport water. I decided to carry a jerry can filled with water to my classes for one day. There's me. I wanted others to learn about the water crisis too. It was extremely difficult to carry and I couldn't imagine having to do that every day, which is the reality for so many people around the world. Once I got a glimpse of this injustice, I could not ignore it. I was ruined. I continued carrying the jerry can with me everywhere I went 24 seven for eight months. From the grocery store to concerts to coffee shops, 
My jerry can sparked conversations everywhere I went. Not only was I able to educate a lot of people about the water crisis, but I was able to fund a water project in Haiti. Since then, I founded a club called Billikens for Clean Water so others can join me in my efforts to spread awareness of the water crisis. More recently, I traveled with six other students to Flint, Michigan, where there is a water crisis occurring a lot closer to home. We went to volunteer with relief service organizations and to create a photo project to capture the stories of the people affected by the crisis. We only knew about Flint from what we had read in the news and we were nervous to go into communities with so much hurt. But we were able to immerse ourselves in Flint and found our vulnerability meeting the vulnerability of the people we were helping. I was ruined, again. As I move forward, I will strive for true solidarity with others where I am working at an even playing field with those next to me. Being ruined is about learning something new and not being able to go back. But even more so, being ruined is about moving forward. What do you do once you are ruined? It can be tempting to take the easy way out. You might want to shove what you learned under a rug or put your tunnel vision glasses on and ignore what is happening around you. But this is not what Billikens are taught to do. Rather, we are called to take action against injustices we encounter in order to inspire others to do the same. Let me give you an example of this Billiken ripple effect. It's been just over a year and a half since I carried a jerry can to my classes. Since that time, hundreds of SLU students have carried jerry cans and helped our club to raise over $10,000 for clean water projects. Students from other universities have seen our work and have started carrying jerry cans too. Being ruined is not just about you. It's about everyone. It's about change. It's about the future. It's about creating ripples bigger than you ever thought possible. A mentor recently asked me what I'll miss most about SLU. My response? the people who challenge me on a daily basis to stretch my ways of thinking, my healthcare ethics professor who loves his students, my friend who aspires to get her law degree to help immigrants, my psychology mentors who put their hearts into their research. I am constantly surrounded by people who are striving to live the values of SLU's mission and who in turn motivate me to do the same. So thanks, Slu, for ruining us. No, really, thank you. You called us to change society, and in doing so, changed us. Being men and women for others can be uncomfortable, messy, and life-altering, but it's what we're called to do. You made our worldviews bigger. You taught us about serving others. You exposed us to new ways of thinking, you made us realize how small we are, yet how great we can be. Now, it is time for us to go ruin others with what we have learned. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah, that was wonderful. It is now my honor to introduce the 2016 SLU commencement speaker. Kevin F. O'Malley is the United States Ambassador to Ireland. Ambassador O'Malley was sworn in as the 31st U.S. Ambassador to Ireland on September 30th, 2014. It is a truly great honor. But before that appointment, 
He was a highly respected lawyer here in St. Louis who has consistently been named one of the outstanding lawyers in America. He was also appointed as the only non-physician to the State Board of Healing Arts, becoming the chair of that board. His distinguished career also includes positions with the U.S. Justice Department and as an assistant U.S. attorney in St. Louis. Ambassador O'Malley is also a two-time graduate of St. Louis University, earning his bachelor's degree in 1970 and his law degree in 1973. We are very proud to call him a SLU alum. Please join me in welcoming St. Louis University's 2016 commencement speaker, Ambassador Kevin F. O'Malley. So it is that President John Kennedy was the first American president to visit Ireland. Uh, he did so in June of 1963. And he was um, taken for the very first time in his life by his Irishness. He had spent little time before then contemplating his ancestors uh, or his background. But he fell in love with Ireland and Ireland's people as I have uh, in the last several years. And one night, not long after his trip to Ireland in June of 1963, President Kennedy and his old buddy Dave Powers were having a drink in the residence of the, the residential part of the White House. And uh, Powers, being an old time friend, could press the president a little bit over drinks. And he pressed him about who did President Kennedy think would be his successor as President of the United States. President Kennedy named the usual suspects. And um, Powers, after a couple more drinks, pressed President Kennedy a little bit further and asked, so who are you though? Who are you going to endorse to be your successor as President of the United States? <clears throat> Excuse me, and President Kennedy replied, according to Powers in a flash, I intend to endorse that candidate who promises to nominate me to be the United States Ambassador to Ireland. <laughs> so President Kennedy, um, foresaw something that I've had a chance to see now. And history, sadly, cannot tell us exactly uh, what would have happened uh, for President Kennedy. But I can tell you that being nominated to be the United States Ambassador to Ireland has done wonders for my grade point average. Uh, <laughs> as I stand here, uh, it is obviously soared uh, that I have been asked uh, to deliver this commencement address, uh, class of 2016, to my alma mater, soon to be your alma mater. And so I've been asked to give you just a little bit of advice uh, as you embark on your new journey. Um, the last time I was in Chaffetz Arena, I was here, I was attending a concert uh, with my two sons, uh, a concert for a band named Fish. And uh, there, there we are. Uh, and I, can, I have to comment that the, uh, the arena smells much different today than it, uh, than it, did, <laughs> than it did that night. Okay. okay. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, <laughs> President Pistello, uh, Chairman Conrad, Sister Mary Jean Ryan, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished deans, clergy and faculty, and parents uh, and loved ones uh, of the graduates, and most importantly uh, to you, the class of 2016. Since I understand that I am now the only obstacle between you and your graduation, let me tell you that my thoughts uh, for you today uh, are in three parts and are succinct. But before we get to work, I want to make sure that uh, you and I are on the same page. Uh, you know, and I know, don't we, that nothing written on your newly printed diplomas can be read to imply that you now know all that you need to know in order to succeed uh, in this world. Your diplomas will provide evidence that you now officially have enough knowledge to begin a full and productive and happy life of learning. And for that, you have earned the congratulations and the best wishes of everyone in this arena. You will shortly have a document signed by Dr. Pistello that allows whenever you make a mistake for the rest of your lives, will allow you to say that your error was at least an educated guess. 
So my first point is this. Uh, General, uh, later President Dwight David Eisenhower, the architect of one of the most complex military operations of all times, is quoted as having said, the plan is nothing. Planning is everything. So I would like to begin by talking about that piece of wisdom. Others have elaborated on General Eisenhower's formulation. Some have written that the battle plan lasts only until the first engagement with the enemy, but General Eisenhower captures the concept best for me. The person in that picture, that mean-looking guy, is me. It was August 1968 in Prague, Czechoslovakia. I was at that time a junior studying political science here at St. Louis University. A few days after that picture was taken, literally a few days after that picture was taken, the very spot on which I was standing was overrun by Russian tanks, which were part of an invasion force sent from Moscow, in part to prevent people like me from walking in places like that. This is where I currently live. It's in Dublin, Ireland. It's an 18th century mansion. I don't want to tell you how many bedrooms. Uh, situated on about 65 acres, located within the largest park in Europe. The President of the United States direct, directs that I live there while I do my current job. I swear to you, by all that is sacred, there was absolutely no plan to get from there to there. <laughs> There was, however, plenty of planning between those two points, separated by 46 years. The plan is nothing. Planning is everything. Master plans for taking over the galaxy generally fail. Daily, weekly, monthly, and or yearly self-examination and planning, however, frequently build upon one another and propel us to our goals. Surely, as a 21-year-old SLU exchange student living behind what was then lovingly referred to as the Iron Curtain, I expanded on an interest in politics and international affairs, but that wasn't, that wasn't where my planning took me. To the contrary, I entered the law school here at St. Louis University, married a SLU nurse, graduated th from the law school on my 26th birthday, and set out on a legal practice Exclusively, exclusively within the borders of the United States of America. I took a position with the U.S. Department of Justice investigating and prosecuting mafia cases, which was exciting and challenging, but had nothing to do, obviously, with where the trail ended, uh, or did it. I eventually went into private practice, specializing in cases concerning medicine, and did that work happily for 25 years. During the time I practiced law, my wife and I had the two sons that you saw earlier. Uh, we bought a home, we saved some money. I stayed interested in politics, but I really didn't spend much time with it because my planning had to do more with building a family and becoming the best trial lawyer that I could. Now, what I'm about to tell you uh, is not intended as and is not a political statement. It really is not. I'm not advocating anything here, but I'm just relating how something happened. I decided that I should become very involved in the presidential campaign of Senator Barack Obama because the mundane daily, monthly, and yearly planning on the more day-to-day -day activities offered me a great deal of freedom with my family and my law practice. I could jump in with both feet, and with both feet I jumped in. I traveled throughout the United States supporting the candidacy of Senator Obama as a campaign volunteer. Since I was neither a major campaign donor nor a major fundraiser, just a committed campaign loyalist, the story should have ended there after we won. But because President Obama is the kind of person that he is, he asked me to take on this new challenge. No one was more surprised than I was when he called and asked me to go to Ireland as our country's representative. My own grandparents, uneducated and impoverished, had fled Ireland with seven children as economic refugees 
for a chance at better lives in the United States. Now, only two generations later, only two generations later, I was being asked by the President of the United States to return to the land they were forced to flee as the ambassador of the country that gave them refuge. No one could or should develop a master plan to, to get from that point A to this point. There was, however, believe me, no plan but a ton of daily, monthly, and yearly planning to be in a position, so to speak, to be in position. There was no plan, but in retrospect, there was no accident either. The plan is nothing. Planning is everything. The plan is always to keep planning, to keep examining, to plan some more so that you are putting yourself in the very best position to minimize disaster or maximize opportunity. As you are thinking and planning and examining, you will hear, that some, you will hear some people say that they have successfully pulled off a 40-year game plan or that someone's career was one uninterrupted upward spiral. Please, class of 2016, do yourself a favor and just disregard that kind of public relation pitch for the dream marketing effort it likely is. There are very, very few nonstop flights. Few of us have not been touched by mistakes, failures, and setbacks. It's just part of life. The only question presented at the time of mistakes and failure and setbacks is what do I do next? You get up, you dust yourself off, you learn something from the event, and you begin planning anew. I truly wish that my second point were not true, uh, but it is. And I suspect that you, class of 2016, actually feel this much more than I do. My wish for each of you is that you embrace the fact that the world is shrinking day by day and perhaps hour by hour. But it matters to you and to your loved ones that there are millions of refugees pressing at Europe's southern borders. It matters to you that China is creating islands out of sandbars in the South China Sea. It matters to you and your future that the Russian economy is tanking as we are speaking. It matters to you that a weak government exists in Somalia. It matters to you and to your families that Colombia is now fighting the narco traffickers. It matters to each of us whether the United Kingdom votes to stay in or exit the, economic, the European Union on June the 23rd. It matters to you that North Korea is progressing its work on long-range missiles, and it matters to you that there is a war being waged against AIDS in Africa. Whether it be a small ripple effect or an uber tsunami, we are now so interconnected that we can no longer shut ourselves off from developments, good or bad, well, well beyond our borders. This state of affairs truly needs to be our state of mind. Living in Europe, I see every day that the world looks to us, the United States, for stability, guidance, fairness, and power in dealing with all of the big issues. You are now officially educated people. You are now officially educated people. And you must lead these discussions in an educated manner. Ignorance is simply not a good option here. It is a dangerous and an unnecessary one. The world's people look to us and will look to you the future leaders of the United States of America, especially in the smaller, faster, more interconnected world of your future. America needs more than taxpayers and spectators. We need educated and informed citizen participants. My final area of thought is a simple little mantra that I heard several years ago and which truly resonated with me, and I hope it's helpful to you. I find myself mumbling this to myself several times a day. That mantra is simply this, my own self at my best, always. This has been something of a North Star for me over the last several years. My own self is a reminder to me that I must continually make some time for myself to stay in touch with my spiritual side who I am and what I am about. Some time to reflect on what has been referred to beautifully as the sacrament of the present moment. 
not fussing with trying to make everyone else what I think they should be, but striving through all of the noise and all of the clutter of the modern world to, dis to discover and to rediscover who I really am and what it is that God really wants me to do here. At my best, no shortcuts, no second best, always, no excuses. So class of 2016, I guarantee you that you will live in very, very interesting times. I guarantee that. I also guarantee, I also guarantee, I guarantee this, that my generation, the generous lot that we are, are going to leave you with a pot full of problems that you're gonna to get to work on. But I know that you have been, however, prepared well prepared by St. Louis University to take on the many interesting challenges that you're going to face. Please plan for your next steps and for your next goals. Please see the shrinking world around you and how it affects both for good and for bad the lives that you will lead and the lives of your loved ones. Don't get too angry or frustrated with the occasional curveball that gets thrown even if it knocks you down. You have been well prepared. You have been well prepared to know who you truly are, what is truly important, and what your standards must be. So you have seen here at St. Louis University the quintessential values of higher education. Optimism, tolerance, a sense of service, empathy, and hope. As has been said by others, cynicism, never fed a young mind. Cynicism never started a business. Cynicism never cured a disease. Cynicism never brought peace anywhere. Hope, hope is what each of us here in this arena have for you, class of 2016. Boundless hope that your new degrees will lead you to productive and happy lives for you, for your future careers, for your future families, and for our country. Congratulations, Billikens. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. It is now my privilege to present Mr. Joseph Conram, the chairman of the St. Louis University Board of Trustees. Good morning, all. President Pestello, I have the honor to inform you that the Board of Trustees, by virtue of the right granted to it by the state of Missouri, has voted to authorize you to confer upon these persons honorary degrees in recognition of their singular achievements, Ambassador Kevin O'Malley and Sister Mary Jean Ryan. First, to honor Ambassador O'Malley, I invite University Trustee Keith Phoenix forward to read the Ambassador's citation. As you've heard, it was more than a century since Kevin's grandparents left Ireland to live in the United States. They settled in Chicago without any funds, but with seven children. St. Louis University alumnus Kevin O'Malley embodies the goodwill, shared values, and complementary aspirations that link the United States and Ireland. President Obama, citing Mr. O'Malley's Catholic faith, his deep understanding of the political relationship between the United States and Ireland, and Kevin's extensive knowledge of Ireland's history and culture, nominated him as the 31st U.S. Ambassador to the Emerald Isle. 
The Senate Foreign Relations Committee unanimously, a strange event for our nation's capital, unanimously approved Kevin O'Malley, quickly confirmed by the Senate, and on September the 30th, 2014, Kevin was sworn in by Vice President Biden and became Ambassador O'Malley. Decades earlier, the ambassador began his career, as you heard here at St. Louis University. It was in 1970 when he earned his bachelor's degree in political science at the College of Arts and Sciences, and three years later, a Juris Doctorate at St. Louis University School of Law. Following law school, Mr. O'Malley worked for the Justice Department, six years as a special attorney in the organized crime section, prosecuting large-time criminals in Los Angeles, Washington, and Phoenix, and then returned to St. Louis, where he served four more years as an assistant U.S. attorney. He later became a partner in the prestigious law firm here in St. Louis, Greensfelder, Hempker, and Gale, while at the same time devoting some time to teaching trial advocacy at St. Louis University Law School. He's ranked among the best lawyers in America, elected a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers. Mr. O'Malley is nationally recognized for his treatise regarding jury instructions, which still used today in federal trials throughout the United States. It was in 2009 that Governor Jay Nixon appointed Mr. O'Malley as the only non-physician member of the Missouri Board of Healing Arts. And a short time later, those physicians elected Kevin to board presidency. Ambassador O'Malley and his wife, Dina, a School of Nursing alumna, have two adult sons, one of whom is a St. Louis University graduate. For his deep devotion to the people of the United States and long-standing affinity for the people of Ireland, for his limitless dedication to building a more and just and connected international community, and for his commitment to faith and education as paths to understanding and truth, the degree of Doctor of Medical Sciences, honoris causa, will be conferred upon the Honorable Kevin F. O'Malley. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon Ambassador Kevin O'Malley the degree of Doctor of Medical Sciences and declare that his name will be inscribed forever on the university's role of honorary graduates. Next, to recognize Sister Mary Jean Ryan, I ask University Trustee Jacqueline Drury Polvoet to come forward and read Sister Mary Jean's citation. A world leader in healthcare. St. Louis University alumna, Sister Mary Jean Ryan, is guided by a simple quote. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. A Franciscan Sister of Mary for more than 50 years, she entered the convent in 1960 and took her final vows in 1968. She earned a nursing diploma at St. Mary's Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin in 1959, a bachelor's degree in nursing from SLU in 1967, and a master's degree in hospital and health administration from Xavier University in 1974. She has worked in hospitals in St. Louis, Jefferson City, Missouri, 
Madison, Wisconsin, Culver City, California, and Dillon, South Carolina. In 1986, she became the first president and chief executive officer of SSM Healthcare. Under her guidance, the system grew into a $3.7 billion enterprise and became the first healthcare company in the country to receive a Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Sister Mary Jean has visited 30 countries to give presentations on this work. Throughout her tenure, Sister Mary Jean ensured that SSM Health became a strong advocate for preserving natural resources, valuing ethnic and gender diversity, and encouraging a nonviolent culture. Sister Mary Jean retired as president and CEO of SSM Health in 2011. However, she continued to serve the organization as chair of the corporate board until 2014. Since that time, she has chaired SSM's regional and divisional boards. As an SSM Health top official and a former SLU trustee, Sister Mary Jean led by example, and she credits the employees with SSM's success, from housekeepers to top officials. For her extraordinary dedication to the health of all in our region, for her exceptional commitment to Catholic values and the Franciscan Sisters of Mary, and for her visionary leadership of SSM Health, the degree of Doctor of Public Service, honoris causa, will be conferred upon Sister Mary Jean Ryan. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon Sister Mary Jean Ryan the degree of Doctor of Public Service and declare that her name will be inscribed forever on the university's role of honorary graduates. We now come to the highlight of the program, the multiple conferring of degrees. There is a two-part procedure to this conferral ceremony. First, the candidates for degrees will be presented by the respective deans of the colleges and schools of the university. Then the president will confer the degrees. I would ask you to hold your applause until the president has finished speaking, but that has never worked. We will begin with the College of Arts and Sciences. The candidates from the other schools will be presented in the order in which they appear in your program. We begin with Dean Chris Duncan. Would the candidates for degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the, candidates, would the candidates for degrees from the School of Medicine please rise?
President Costello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Medicine, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degree of Doctor of Medicine, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the School of Law please rise? <laughs> President, President Costello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Law, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degree of Juris Doctor for which they have been recommended, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the John Cook School of Business please rise? <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the John Cook School of Business, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Will the candidates for degrees from Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology please rise? <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented and the degrees for which they have been nominated. And I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for the degrees from the School of Nursing please rise? Yeah. <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the Edward and Margaret Doisy College of Health Sciences please rise?
President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the Edward and Margaret Doisy College of Health Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated. And I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would candidates for degrees from the College for Public Health and Social Justice please rise. <laughs> President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the College for Public Health and Social Justice, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the School for Professional Studies please rise? <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the School for Professional Studies, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated. And I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Will the candidates for the degrees from the School of Education please rise? <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Education, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated. And I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Will the candidates for degrees from the university centers please rise? President Pastello, on behalf of the University Centers, it is my honor to present to you these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names have been presented the degrees for which they have been nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Congratulations again to all of our graduates today. While this day marks the end of your time as a student, it is the beginning of your lifelong connection as an alumna or alumnus of St. Louis University. Your alumni family is some 120,000 strong. They are mission-driven and successful alumni living around the world. 
And wherever your life's journey takes you, there will be opportunities to remain connected to St. Louis University. And SLU is still your home, and you will always be welcome on campus. So now, let's hear it for our newest St. Louis University graduates and alumni. I think we have a I think we have a north to south wind <laughs> here in the arena. Congratulations again. As we close our ceremonies on this Saturday morning, I would like to invite Reverend Tracy Blackman, pastor of Christ the King United Church of Christ, to confer a blessing upon all of us. It is indeed difficult to top what just happened. <laughs> and in recognition of the few trustees that whispered in my ear, a request to include in the blessing, a prayer for SLU basketball, I'll say go Billikens now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these sacred moments of affirmation between students, faculty, staff, and family. We thank you for the privilege this moment affords us all to remember the paths and the planning that led us to this moment and rededicate ourselves to the journey ahead. We thank you for the bold witness of extravagant welcome continuing testament and transformed lives that is the witness of St. Louis University. And we ask now for these 2016 graduates courage to speak boldly and prophetically to the issues of our time. Compassion for all who may seem to have lost their way. Conviction to act in the face of all injustice, wisdom to know when to speak and when to listen, camaraderie to lighten the burdens that they most definitely will bear, discernment to know the difference between their voice and yours, safety from all that would seek to harm them physically or spiritually, endurance that is derived from pacing the run, and tenacity derived from a commitment to finish the race. Grant them laughter at their own mistakes along the way, joy that reminds them why they began in the first place, empathy for, for the sufferings that they have not personally endured, awareness of the many blessings that surround them, and hunger for what lies just beyond their reach. We pray for each graduate, vision of who they can become, and gratitude for who they already are. 
and at the end of every challenge, and at the close of every day, we ask, gracious God, for moments of personal grace that they may always abide in your peace. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Reverend Blackman. This concludes our commencement exercises. We ask the graduates to please remain seated until after the stage party and the faculty have left the arena. We ask that the graduates and their family and friends meet out in front of Chaffetz Arena on this side, gates A, B, and C. Uh, your graduates will meet you outside. Graduates, after you process out, if you would like to take a picture with Dr. Pastello or members of our faculty, please go to the Chaffetz Arena practice gym where Dr. Pastello and members of the faculty will be there. You can then meet up with your family and friends outside of the arena. Again, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Congratulations to our graduates, and have a wonderful rest of the day. <laughs>